In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches in the southern part of Cumbria. And I'm going to give a homily today on the last Sunday of the church's year, uh, the Feast of Christ the King. It's appropriate that we cap the year, as it were, with a remembrance that God uh, is a universal king. We live in his kingdom. We look at the readings. The readings for this Sunday of the 34th Sunday, Christ the King, Year C of the Catholic Cycle. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Samuel. Uh, Paul, King Paul has fallen from grace, or Saul rather, has fallen from grace and has been killed in battle. They come to David as the only and obvious alternative. They said Paul, uh, Saul rather, had, has been our shepherd, shepherd king. Now you can be our shepherd king, they say to David. And then what did they do? They anointed him. They anointed him at Hebron. Anointing means commissioned him. It's God's way of blessing his work. And we remember our great Queen Elizabeth on her coronation day was anointed to be queen and she took it very seriously as our servant queen. The next uh, well, the psalm also uh, reminds us that we are travelling to Jerusalem, not the Jerusalem of old but the new Jerusalem of heaven because the fullness of God's kingdom is beyond this world. It lies in heaven. And find the next one, a reading from the letter of St Paul to the Colossians. It's a beautiful reading. Uh, Paul gives thanks to the Lord and just praises God in Jesus. He has taken us out of the power of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of the Son that he loves. That's what the God the Father has done. And Jesus is therefore the image of the unseen God. The God we can't see, we do see in Jesus. The firstborn from all creation. Uh, in him were created, this is Jesus, all things in heaven and earth, everything visible, everything invisible. And it goes on. Before anything was created, he existed, pre-existing everything. And he holds all things in unity. Jesus is the one who holds this whole world And now the church is his body. We, the people, are the living stones in Christ's body. We're, as it were, God on earth. How beautiful. And then we go on to the gospel. The people are looking at Jesus on the cross. He saved others. Why does he not save us? There is that statement put up by Pontius Pilate. He is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals abused Jesus, but the other said, quiet. And he just said this to Jesus. Have you no fear of God? He said to the other criminal. 
Jesus, he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied, today you will be with me in paradise. Even on the cross, Jesus, dying for us, promises life, the fullness of life, beyond this world. Read them again. They're beautiful readings with lots to think about. But I'm going to just do my homily and hopefully will, as it were, point a few things to you that might be useful in your, in your personal growth, in your spiritual life. We never stop growing, whatever our age. That's why in any parish there will be adult faith development so that we can keep growing in faith. Uh, so we celebrate today two sides of Jesus, the God of glory and the intimate caring God. There's a lovely poem, I can't remember it, what its name was, about an elderly parish priest who lived many years ago. He got a night call to a sick parishioner, but sat down on his chair and went to sleep. He was tired. Awaking, he rushed out into the fields to the house. The man had died. He was asked, why do you come again? He realised Jesus had come in his stead. And then he summed it all up, rather in accordance with the themes of the readings today. He summed it up in awe and wonder. He who made the night of stars for souls that tire and bleed, like myself, had pity on the least of things, asleep upon a chair. The maker of the starry skies had pity on one speck of humanity and cared. So, of course, we celebrate the God of glory. This is the last Sunday of the church's year. It's fitting that it should end with a shout of triumph. The Jesus we know so intimately is the king of the universe. It's like a firework display that ends with a, a dazzling display of sound and light. So our first lesson is that Jesus is victory and glory. And all who follow Jesus are going towards victory and glory. Yet we also see different sides of Jesus in the readings that show that he cares for his people. And it's quite usual for people to have different sides of their character. One person might be, for example, a powerful high court judge or the governor of the Bank of England or, or whatever it might be. Yet he may also be a kindly family man, a good friend in need and a faithful parishioner. I'm told that the real governor of the Bank of England stood in to do the accounts of a parish church in London. Those who met the person will know him mainly by one side of his or her character. They may not see the governor of the Bank of England, for example, in the person counting the cash. It's the same with Jesus. Today we also celebrate, so often the power of Jesus is hidden for us. Now, today we also celebrate the God in Jesus who cares for us. In the church's year, we walk with him through his life, his birth, his teaching, his uh, suffering and his dying. And, of course, his glorious resurrection as the conqueror of sin and death. I think three aspects of caring kingship 
are shown to us today in the readings. Jesus, first of all, is anointed to fill the scriptures. He's a successor of David's royal line. He fulfills God's promise made through King David to save his people. So, scriptures. Jesus is also anointed, as we heard, of King David to be a shepherd king. That's one who guides us in the scriptures and church teaching. He shepherds us along. So we listen. That's our response. Um, next, Jesus is anointed to be servant king. The gospel reminds us that he suffers for his people and sacrifices himself on the cross so that we may be reconciled through him and have life. Now we respond, therefore, to the scriptures today because they are God speaking to us, our Lord speaking to us through the words of scripture. I suppose our first response is we listen. He's the shepherd king who guides us in scriptures and church teaching. Secondly, we receive him personally in the sacraments, not as empty ritual, but as God who forgives us, for example, and heals us and feeds us in the Eucharist. It's always personal with Christ to each one of us. Finally, we build up the body of Christ, the church. God calls us to be his friends, his family, and gathers us each Sunday like a shepherd gathers his flock. That is so important that we build our church. It doesn't happen. It is us who make it. With God's, of course, grace and help. The next thing that the scriptures require us to do is be people of service. As the servant king suffers and dies for us, that we may have life. So we agree to, in a sense, die a little to ourselves, to our convenience, to serve others. And of course, the one thing that it gives us is hope, real hope for the future. We pray that our, as our life fades away, we too will hear those life-giving words. Indeed, I promise you today, you will be with me in paradise. Then I say, we turn in awe again to the same Jesus the intimate Jesus, to Jesus now, the universal King. His rule stretches far beyond this world, far beyond our time. All was created through him and for him. All will ultimately submit to him. He judges, he gives life. And from there, turning towards that God, we naturally go on to worship Jesus as God. In doing so, we're like, as it were, almost like spacemen. We've come up from the earth, which we thought was so big, and see the earth below us. From God's point of view, a tiny little orb, a tiny thing. And then turn our eyes, as these spacemen might do, to the mighty universe with awe, with reverence, and to the God who made it all. As always, we try and respond with a prayer because if God speaks to us, 
it's most impolite not to reply, as if we haven't heard. Our prayer might be something like this, Lord Jesus, you are King of the universe, maker of the starry skies. You care for me and guide me. I come to you in trust. Help me to hear your voice and do your will so that your kingdom of truth and life, of holiness, grace, of justice, love and peace may come into my place through me. Amen. This is the last Sunday of the church's year, although there are a few ordinary days, days when the priest has a green chasuble on uh, to run out until next Sunday afterwards. So this Sunday, Christ the King, the Sunday afterwards, the first Sunday of Advent, the new church's year, year A, in the three-year cycle of Sunday. And we look forward to that and the coming of the Lord at the first Christmas. God bless you and keep you. <laughs>